I've got a story to, to relate to you that I, that I read this week. Um, a man named John Mahoney was a lieutenant colonel in the United States Army. And after he retired uh, from, from the Army, he continued on in work, uh, presently works for IBM. But there was a period of time that he was doing contract work for Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And in 2001, he went to go meet with uh, people on a certain project. And on September 10th, he stayed at the Marriott Hotel at the World Trade Center. And on September 11th, he went to go to the meeting with his friends and his coworkers on the 19th floor of the World Trade Center. And in his words, he said that the entire building shook and it knocked everybody almost to their feet. And they didn't know what on earth had happened. And his immediate thought was, since he'd been raised in California, that there was an earthquake. But then because of his military training, he thought, no, wait a minute, that's a bomb. Not realizing what truly had happened. But they knew something was very, very wrong because they could see things falling out of the window and, and they could smell smells and, and there was a haze. So he gathered together his 19 coworkers and they headed into the hallway to, to head down a stairwell. And there were hundreds of other people who were, were following through too. And, going through that smoke and that haze and, and the smell of jet fuel and not knowing what's going on, they headed down the stairwell. And they were thankful that at least there was still some lights on. But then the sprinklers came on, the fire sprinklers, and it was just almost like this cascading waterfall of water that, that almost knocked them to their feet. They still didn't know what was going on, but his wording is, as I stepped into that smoky stairway, the Lord's prayer ran through my mind over and over and over. Thy will be done. At first, I could only get through part of the prayer, but after a few floors, that prayer relaxed me and I was able to say it completely. And he says that at one point, something came over him and it reminded him of a time when he was a child when he would be in a cold swimming pool and his mom would lift him up out of the swimming pool and wrap him in a warm towel and hold him tight and he felt that warmth of love of a parent in the midst of all of that chaos and he says as i walked down that stair somewhere between the 12th floor and the 10th somewhere between our father and thy will be done, that same feeling came over me. Suddenly I was wrapped in warmth and love and comfort. And in that smoky wet stairway in a burning building surrounded by thousands of frightened people, I felt wonder. I felt God's peace. I knew that regardless of the physical outcome, everything would be all right. There are some thousands of stories from 9-11. Some of the stories are pain and survival. Many are the stories of heroism. Mine is a story of faith. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for the opportunity to pray together and worship together. And I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart reflect yours through the power and love of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, from the sixth chapter. It's, it's tucked away in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, which if you've never read that entire thing, it's a challenging piece of scripture. But tucked in the middle of there, in the sixth chapter, verses one through nine, the words of Jesus are, beware of practicing your piety before others in, other, in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they can be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But what, whenever you pray, go into your room, shut the door, 
and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're starting a new series this morning on the Lord's Prayer. A lot of us that grew up in church, we had that thing just cemented in our brain. We, we can say it in our sleep almost. It does come from Scripture. It is part of the Bible. It, it, it is very much a part of Christianity worldwide in all forms of Christianity. We know the Lord's Prayer. But my goal over the next few weeks is to help us to pick it apart piece by piece. Because I know, at least with me, there are plenty of times that I'm just going, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And it's just words. Just like Jesus said in there where, where Jesus said, when you're praying, do not heap up empty phrases. I've been guilty with the Lord's Prayer at times of heaping up empty phrases that they're just something I say by rote memory and I'm not even thinking about it. So I try fairly often, if I'm not verbally leading the Lord's Prayer, to in my heart and in my mind reword it and go, God, you're my Father. I know you're in heaven and I know you love me and you are holy. And just reword it in my own head as it goes by because it, it, it's so important that we maintain the meaning of it. But there's also so much meaning in every little piece of this prayer. It's just a few words. Matter of fact, when you turn to, to the version that's in Luke, it's only in two of the four Gospels. It's in Matthew and in Luke. It's not in John and it's not in Mark. But the version that's in Luke is really short. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day your daily bread. Forgive us our sins, and for, as we forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to a time of trial. Jesus didn't even put an amen on it. He just left it hanging right there. But there's still such power that's inside those words that Jesus taught us to pray. But not if we're only praying just the words, but when we pray the meaning of those words. So we start with... Our Father. Just those two words have so much you can unfold and unpack. To begin with, our. God is our Father. Not just mine, not just Jesus's. I mean, we know God is as the Father of Jesus Christ, but then it's our. And when we say our, that's all of us. Not all of us in Heiko, but all of us all around this big green thing that we spins out in space called Earth. All are saying, our Father. It doesn't say our God, it says our Father. There was one time in my very first semester of seminary that I went to a chapel service and they said, our Father, our Mother who art in heaven, my head turned to what? Huh? And I get that more now. But that's not what it says. Now the reason that that's done sometimes is because there are people that have had a hard time with their father. And there's a belief that there could be some people that would stay away from church because of the fact that we continually talk about God our Father. And if they had a father that abused them on any level, that could be like, what? I don't want to worship father. My father was a bad man. And I understand that. But I also understand very clearly that those people need a father that loves them. They need to know the love of their father. The concept of God as Father is crucial 
to understanding the concept of the Trinity because the Trinity being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all as one has to have Father and Son and Holy Spirit. God does not have a gender. God is spirit. But at the same time, the Father is the one that places the seed of creation. So the Father is the one that created everything. And the Son is the one that he sent to earth to be with us. And the Holy Spirit is the one that remains with us and guides us and, and holds us close. So it's crucial to be able to understand that. You know, this use of, of the Lord's Prayer in church goes all the way back to the first century. And sometimes I have to stop and think, okay, wait a minute. In the first and second century, they really didn't have a Bible. We've got this thing we call a Bible with the New Testament. First couple hundred years, they didn't have that. They had the Jewish Bible, but they didn't have a New Testament. They didn't have Gospels they could go to. But yet there was a document called the uh, Didache that was the first book written in the very first century, somewhere between zero and 100, that was instructions to the church of what to do, how to do baptisms, how to do Eucharist, and how to do the Lord's Prayer. So before the Gospels were even written, there was a document that said, three times a day, go pray the Our Father. And we're still doing it today. Maybe not three times a day, but maybe we should. Our Father who art in heaven. I don't mind telling you that I struggle with old English. I know that so well in that way, our Father who art in heaven but it really helps me to put it into words that I understand. Our Father in heaven. And then you come upon that part of hallowed be thy name. I don't want to get into just a scholarly lecture, but at the same time, I looked up that word because I've struggled with that word of hallowed. For some of us, at least my brain went, Halloween. <laughs> Well, you know, those are actually related. Hallowed and Halloween, there's the same root because that was All Hallows' Eve in the Catholic Church. That's where Halloween came from. Hallowed still is an English word that still has a definition, but we just don't use it. It means to be holy. So it means let the name of God remain holy. Don't do anything to defile the name of God. Let the name of God be holy. So our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Jesus said earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Still working on that. Oh, oh, I forgot we've got one. She's still working on it, too. She admitted it to me last week. But it's so important that we understand this concept of our Father. Because it means that we all have the same Father. We're all related to each other. And we're all adopted kids. To be an adopted child that's loved and cherished is something really, really special. Because to be adopted means that you were chosen. God says, I love you, I love that one. And I'm gonna adopt that one into my family, into the same family of Jesus. To have the same father as Jesus Christ. We are adopted into that family. In Romans it says, for all are led by the Spirit of God, are children of God. For you didn't receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. You received a spirit of adoption. You were adopted by God. And when you cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness in our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. We're heirs 
we're going to be written in the will of God. It comes to that later, doesn't it? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But it is so important that we stop and just ponder those words a little bit. Our Father in heaven, let your name be holy. Let us never take your name in vain. Let us always keep you reverent and holy. So it's a crucial thing to remember that this prayer is being prayed all across this globe this morning. We share these same words with the rest of the world. All of the believers around the globe saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we are all a part of this family of God. To understand really, 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 really to get it that you are a child of God and that God loves you as a parent that cherishes you will provide for you, take care of you, and hold you for eternity. That you would be able to have the same sense of love that Mr. Mahoney felt on 9-11. He wrote, when I walked from those ruined towers, I took two priceless gifts with me. First, I carry God's peace with me every day. And even if I get distracted, Christ's love is all around us. It takes just a few lines from a simple prayer to wrap itself around me once again. Just like his mom wrapping him in a warm towel. Second, I know with certainty that my words cannot possibly convey, but I know what will happen to me when I die. I will rise from this shell like a child fresh and clean from a bath and I will be wrapped in the warmth of his love and his forgiveness and his peace. So I pray that we all understand that our Father loves us and our Father cherishes us and our Father accepts us and our Father adopts us and our Father will never let us go. And then remember that we share that same inheritance with Jesus Christ and the entire rest of the world. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día y perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal. Amén. Hanere Gesin Uri Abogio, Irimi Goruki Ogimel Padusiumio, Narai Ima Opsimio, Tisi Hanere Seirungo Kachi, Tangi Sotu Iruojida, Unala Uri Egel Yungal Yang Sigul Chuopsigo, Uriga Uri Egel Chuejin Jarez Haya Chungo Kachi, 우리 죄를 사하여 주옵시고 우리를 시험에 들게 하지 마옵시고 다만 악에서 구하옵소서 대개 나라와 권세와 영광이 아버지께 영원히 있사옵나이다. 아멘 다투에 주중주 지를 잡아 지통부 식샤 원풍부에 부쿠투지 미르무스 비안세크 파불러바 무지 비안세크 무주 투발레 차쿠지 체 차마트콘스 would you pray with me? God, you are our Father. You are holy. We ask that you wrap your arms of love around us and pull us close and remind us that we are cherished and we are adopted and that we are yours forever. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.